<laughs> is that a four loco? Absolutely not. How <laughs> old do you think I am? Come on. Come on. Not. No, it's not. He said absolutely not. How old do you think he is? <laughs> motherfucking cyberpunk <laughs> we are back with another episode this is the pod boys advanced podcast it's a weekly discussion where we go over the latest in gaming and toss in a little bit of whatever else you want to talk about my name is oscar i'm joined as always by my co-host and best friend what is up it is eric how are you today i'm all right man i'm chilling i'm chilling killing some monsters you know how we do yeah yeah that's how we do that's how we do out here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yes sir what does a monster hunter like you drink before a hunt ah glad you ask this monster hunter drinks organic what what, what organic what? apricot you did it again. A- apricot. It's oh, apricot. apricot. Okay, sorry, sorry. Apricot. Oh my god, we had this discussion before. Okay. Like, wow, no, I don't know. You? <laughs> I th- <sighs> there's a bug in my system, and cyberpunk uh, developers like didn't manage to catch it, so just. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, I'm also on like four hours of sleep, so. <laughs> so there, there's er, also er, that Erky's not at full capacity today but he's here for y'all so Th- pray, thank this man for, yeah, for being yeah. here for us tonight yeah i mean you don't have to thank me but <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm here um but yeah organic apricot cider uh it's actually not a cider it's an ale with apricot juice and natural f- uh, natural flavor it says so it's like apricot flavored beer. All right. Yeah. Nice. What about you, sir? What do you what do you got today? I have not a four loco, contrary to popular belief in your household. <laughs> this beautiful can here. Ooh, gosses are red. Gosses are red instead of roses are red. Ghosts are red. It's a ghost style ale with Syrah grapes aged in oak foder, foders. Foders. What are foders? I don't know. No, what are foders? Who knows? But um, brewed and canned by the the brewery with spelled B R U E R A. Oh, in Placentia, California. Oh, so it's a lo- pretty local yeah, one, right? It's like right up the street. Yeah, I got this one by the. But at the liquor store that's right by me, it looked, it looked, it sounded good, so I got it. But uh, let's see, it's and it's brewed in Stamford, wherever Stamford is. Stanford, Stamford. Oh, with an M. Stanford. Yeah, an, yeah. Oh, no idea where that is. Melvin right. Brothers All Saints uh, Brewery in Stamford. Nice. So I don't know where the hell that is, but it looks it, it sounded good. So here we are. So this one's supposedly uh, inspired by a rose wine. So it's like a wine beer. Oh. Hey. Whoa. You want to taste it? That is really fucking good. That's intense. It's in- it's like <laughs> intensely sour and intensely flavorful. Like Yeah, it's, I just it's like grape. Like sour, sour, <clears throat> sour grape. Oh really? Like like grape grape. This is this is really fruity. I had I had uh, melody taste it just now too. 
It's like, like a really sour pretty. wine. This is so weird. It's really interesting. Really good though. This is good. It just it's really fruity. It does taste like apricot. You know, I think I've had apricot like sour ales before, and they, I, I've always been a fan. So mm. that, that, that thing seems pretty, pretty tasty. Yeah, it's pretty. It is pretty tasty. So nice, man. Well, what have you been up to this week, man? What you been playing? Uh, this week, I of course played Destiny a little bit. I actually got got on April's fool on April Fools, bro. What do you mean? So I believe it was uh, a YouTuber, I think a Destiny YouTuber. I think it was Evade. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever catch, caught his videos before. No, I haven't really. You know, I don't, surprisingly, I don't uh, follow too much Destiny content on YouTube. No, really? Well, yeah, it was. I, I, I like I like watching some of those guys like play play trials and stuff because they're really good and it's it's pretty intense most yeah. of those guys those most of those guys play on pc so they have to be good because a lot of people cheat yeah so that's not fun but the reality of things yeah 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 it's it's a actual problem but um anyways uh yeah he posted on his channel this whole thing about the first curse being back in destiny do you remember the first curse? Is that like the reverse last word? The first curse was a hand cannon in Destiny 1. Yeah, and it was the reverse of the last word, supposedly, right? Yeah, something Lower like that. Wise. Yeah. So he posted it and did this whole video where he like did a whole exotic quest. He's like, oh, you got to go to the Glycon and then you got to pick up these parts. It's a secret quest. Blah blah blah, and I was like, "Dude, I'm so stoked!" And I saw the I saw the the video like at work, and I didn't watch it till the end. So I was just like, "Dude, I'm so stoked!" And then today, like, I spent all of yesterday, as April Fool's Day, thinking, "Oh, dude, I gotta get this gun," and then <laughs> came home today. And mind you, like, I've had two like 4 a.m. work shifts, so like, I've been like coming home, sleeping. For like a few hours and then waking up again at like eight in a different and, dimension basically yeah pr- pretty much and so i was like this whole time i thought it was real and i went on this morning and i was like oh dude i started the glycon quest i was like all right go i got gotta go to the first uh to where it showed and then i went to the spot and i was like wait a minute it's it's not it's it's not it's not happening like there's nothing to investigate here and then oh, i was like no. and then that's what it clicked you in my actually, head i was all, like you went all the way to the quest <laughs> and then it clicked in my head i was like damn well it makes you feel it better was an april fool's joke you're not the only one that got got this week we'll be talking about that a little later so yeah so i totally got got and it, i have i got got a day later is the funny part because my my these past couple of days have kind of like melded for me because it's been like a weird schedule, mm-hmm. but yeah, I got got a day later. But uh, anyways, <laughs> I played that a bit. Um, I played uh, some more Diablo three with you guys. That was fun. And uh, so far, you and I got to Act three. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a little bit of scandal because we made seasonal characters. Like, right at the end of the season, and the season ended, so that was confusing for a bit, so we also ended up restarting with another one of our homies. Yeah, so now we so, got more more hardcore characters to kill. Mm-hmm. So. so, it's been fun playing Diablo, and then the other things that I played, uh, I played uh, Narito Boy. Oh, dude, Narita that was, Boy. how's Narito Boy? Dude, honestly, I played... I, I didn't, like, play... A whole whole lot maybe played for like an hour Mm -hmm. Uh, i haven't played since because i got monster hunter (laughs) um but dude i i actually think it was really fun like it was fun and it's like this cool like uh premise where it's 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 actually kind of like tron where like you're this kid that's playing video games right 
-hmm. And there's something to do with like the creator of the game, I believe, or the creator of the of this like computer system or something. And there's like this virus, like evil virus thing that pops up on his computer mm -hmm. and like erases all his memories. So you forget like the the virus or whatever it is is like pretty much taking control of the system. And then you're just this kid playing a game, right? And then you he's like going to bed and like it's it's all like pixel art and it's, it's pretty cool. And uh the guys, the kid's mom is like, hey, go to bed, blah, blah, blah. And he's on this old school computer, and then uh he's like the computer turns on by itself and it's all Tron. And he's like, oh, sucked into the computer. No. Yeah. And apparently you're like some kind of like savior, bro, of like this computer world. And you get you you get the you get this cool like sword. And it's all really like arcade. Like it's got a really arcadey feel to it. Yeah. So I don't know, dude. I've I I thought it was a pretty cool concept. And overall, I've had from the little that I played, like I got as far as getting the sword. Mm -hmm. you, have, you don't you don't start off with the sword, then you get the sword, and then you get your like basic abilities. And up until then, like there's a lot of like actual story. I didn't think there was gonna be so much story in it, you know? Yeah. But it's it's like really deep story, and it's like, oh, you gotta do this and uh get the memories back from this guy and do this other thing and there's like i don't know it's cool i i, I recommend you you pick it up and well, like what's, what's try the it out. gameplay like though the gameplay is is uh pretty fun it's like a it's just like a slasher mm -hmm. and kind of like a puzzle dungeon dungeon crawler a bit because it has you like oh go find go find these uh things and uh like and and find these pieces of the puzzle and then come back to this door and then enter the pieces in order okay you know what i mean yeah like they're that kind of puzzle so far so uh it's kind of fast paced where like you have a dodge and you have like your like your sword or whatever and uh the, you, you gain as you go you gain like more abilities so like i have a dash now so i can dash backwards nice and uh it's pretty fun, dude. It's like so far, I haven't gotten like too far into it, so the enemies have been somewhat easy. But I when I stopped playing it, I got to this part where there was like a sorcerer that I had to like fight. There's oh, there's little boss fights in it too. Oh, uh, I would expect so, yeah. Yeah, and uh but yeah, there was this one sorcerer guy that was like hard to kill because he's like floating, so you gotta like jump and like air slash him. Mm -hmm. And uh this guy also spawned like other little zombie guys so so far the gameplay is good everything's good so far dude i i i if you're into like side scrolling like kind of like slasher kind of games like uh i guess maybe like a beat em up in a way yeah yeah i think i think this is this it's a fun game so that's but, pretty dope actually yeah i i recommend it if not <clears throat> If you like, if you're like, if you can deal with like the side scrolling and all that, if that's if that's something you like, I recommend this one because it's definitely like different than other ones that I played. And also, just like the way it looks, it's it kind of like they kind of made it so like it makes your screen look like an old computer monitor. Oh, okay. It's like a like some sort of like border kind of. Yeah, thing. so it's got like a round filter kind of. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool nice it's kind of trippy too so i don't know i, I recommend it i want to i want to get more like back into it as, like soon i'm trying not to get swallowed into monster hunter but it's already too late mm -hmm. <laughs> and not only that we're gonna we're gonna go back into monster hunter world with the other homies now too so exactly so like uh there's, there's a problem forming here yep yeah so yeah, as for myself, um, we're gonna be talking about Monster Hunter Rise in depth uh, as one of the main topics later. So, but um, the only waking moments I've spent not playing Monster Hunter Rise, like when I have free time other than work and stuff like that, is when I get pulled off by this guy or our other friends. Like he pulls me off for Destiny, or or the, I get pulled off for Diablo, and even that was. It, 
Even that in, was in the beginning of the week when I didn't even have a copy. Yeah, yet. and that was before Eric even had Monster Hunter. So like, literally, I've played a bit of Destiny. I've played a bit of Diablo. I completely dropped the Yakuza and everything because <laughs> Monster Hunter Rise has taken over my life. It's such a fucking good game. I'm like losing my shit over how good it is. Mm-hmm. So I've been having a ton of fun with that. We'll we'll touch on that a little later. But um, yeah, that's been that's been my week uh, to the point where um, I was supposed to download and check out Outriders, which which came out yesterday on the first. That's right. And I downloaded it, and I haven't even touched it because Monster Hunter. So <laughs> there you go. That's my opinions on Monster Hunter so far. Tekken keep. keep Keep it locked and keep it tuned because later on we're going to be uh, going into that in depth. But for now, we can start moving on to some of these little topics here. Uh, so what we teased, what I teased in the intro, cyberpunk, 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 cyberpunk. We're never going to be able to stop saying this game's name, man. It's, they make sure that it stays in the news for all the wrong reasons. <sighs> The so cyber stench never goes away, man. Their patch notes. And if you remember <laughs> the big apology video statement that their uh, CEO made forever ago, saying that, like, oh, in our testing, we didn't encounter almost any of the problems that consumers faced. And we apologize for that. And then they release this huge patch they've been working on for, you know, since launch, basically. It's been a few months now. And you can literally scroll for a solid minute, maybe, with your mouse. If you guys don't believe before us. Before hitting the bottom of this fix list. Just go go see for yourself. Like, if you all have time, just go see for yourself. Go to cyberpunk.net and just find the patch notes, the 1.2 patch notes, and just scroll. And just start scrolling. And, and just, a lot of these lists. keep scrolling. At the end of these lists, a lot of them are capped off with and many more. And 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 various other. And many more. Like So apart from these long ass detailed ones, these There's are just the ones. More. These are just the ones that warranted being typed out. There's a fun game we played last night for a split second. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. Sc- Start scrolling and then uh, tell me tell me when to stop. Right, ready, okay. ready, go. Stop. Okay, I'm gonna read the first the first patch note that I see. Uh, all right, Jackie will no longer get stuck in all foods if you sneak past the boss fight with Royce. Okay, next nice one. Turn. Okay, nice okay, turn. go go ahead. Your turn. Ready and go. Stop. Getting knocked down by vehicles no longer kills V after unlocking the rock perk. <laughs> All right, one, one, one more. We'll do, do one more. Ready? Okay. Go. And stop. Uh, okay, let's see. NPCs will no longer stay blocked in traffic l- lanes while in fear. Like, all these things <laughs> are... <laughs> NPC hit by a car will now immediately run in panic now. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was one, I think, that, that read, uh, it's so many, dude. Cars will no longer fly. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, basically, this is the whole game that, they, that they're patching. This is, like, half of the rest of the game. And they're still working on another big patch, which leads us into our other cyberpunk topic for the week. Uh, Before, in the freaking nine years leading up to this, they had talked multiple times about having a whole, like, standalone uh, multiplayer game, like, separate from cyberpunk that was going to release years afterwards. And it looks like after the struggles of whatever cyber stench ended up being, they decided that maybe that's not so much of a good idea. And they ended up canceling it. And uh, good. Yep, so they can absolutely keep that. 
I'm fine with that. Well, I mean, fix an NPC shouting after being killed. <laughs> like, <laughs> but <laughs> Hold on, this is funny. Jackie no longer shouts, nice shot, when V kills enemies while in stealth mode. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, dude, there's just such a long list of stuff that, like, just little things, you know? Like, how do they not catch all this stuff in testing? Or, like, did they even I, test it? You know what I mean? That's what, uh, uh, no, Eric, clearly they tested it extensively. They just didn't see it because they were probably running the best fucking shit of all time I don't, I don't know no this is impossible this amount of thing like no there's literally no fucking justification or excuse this was it was literally just not done you know what i mean like yeah like straight is, up V will no longer get stuck inside an av flying off if standing on pipes <laughs> oh jesus Jeez, man. Like, you can scroll through this and find some pretty meme memeable things to read. Like, I don't know, man. Anyways, Cyber Stench. At least it's getting a patch, and I uh, probably won't be playing it like we talked uh, until it's 20 bucks. Yep. When it's 20 bucks on PC, I will give it a try then because my PC will be able to fucking handle it. Hopefully, I would fucking expect so. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Maybe then I'll be able to have a, a decent experience with it. But fuck, man. I'm, I'm going to wait till it's fully patched in 20 bucks, like we just said. So Yeah, same. Yeah, moving on from that. So, uh, we had talked earlier in the year about how, M or last year even, how MLB The Show was... Uh, no longer going to be a Sony exclusive going to all platforms. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's skipping the Switch this year, I believe, and it's coming next year to Switch. But um, it is hitting Xbox this year alongside PlayStation and I think PC. And it looks like Xbox locked down a deal with MLB outside of Sony probably because I doubt Sony would agree to it. But looks like MLB The Show 21 is launching day one on Game Pass. Nice. And that's pretty huge, man. That's a $70 game that basically Xbox dudes get to play for a dollar if, if they're just signing up or for the monthly subscription fee, you know what I mean? As opposed to paying the full 70 for it on PlayStation. Yeah, they're, they're really... It's crazy because really, it's a PlayStation Studios game. No, right. Uh, they're really, really, really getting uh, getting as many games as they can on game game pass this is this is good marketing because they're they're getting these games and saying get game pass you get it for free you know what i mean and uh this yeah. is just it's it's just a, it's such a smart move because the more games they have on game pass the more people are going to want to get game pass so like i i sent it to to our homie vince because that's like one of the few yeah, games plays, that still holds, that his, it holds his attention yeah that's like one of his favorite shits and he currently doesn't have a PlayStation. He's just chilling on my um, on my uh, Xbox One X, and um, he has Game Pass on there. So I texted him and I was like, "Hey, dude, the show twenty one is coming for free to Game Pass, basically." And he's just, dude, he was like, Wah! "It was like over the fucking moon, dude!" Like, he nice. Was, now he doesn't have to like. He's been like trying so hard to be get a PS five, and it's just not happening for him. So like yeah. now he doesn't even have to like trip about that game at least which is one of his main his main things you know so yeah well that's good that's good it's pretty cool man go xbox dude making making big moves out here yeah go go game pass dude game pass is becoming slow slowly becoming one of the best deals in gaming for sure Yep, uh, PlayStation actually uh, amid a bunch of a, a bunch uh, amidst a, bu a bunch of uh, bad news around PlayStation recently. Here's a good win. Uh, the PlayStation Plus games were announced for the month, uh, including Days Gone, mm -hmm. and if you're a PS5 owner, you get the brand new Odd World Soulstorm for free through PS yeah. Plus. That is absolutely amazing. We have been like every time we see it. Um, uh, we say that we're down for it, but, but you know what I mean? So, I mean, mm -hmm. 
I was probably gonna wait for it to like go on sale and pick it up like later, you know. I'm down to play it, but probably not at full price, especially if it was 70, you know. Yeah. But now it's just fucking there, dude. Yeah, that's dope. So I retweeted a tweet of Sp- from Spawn Wave earlier, basically saying that like there these this competition to like make these services enticing to get people to sign up right now between PlayStation and Microsoft, like we're the ones that are currently winning off of it. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, because we're getting we're all getting these games, fucking for free. free games left and right. You know, and apart from um, apart from those, uh, this month is when that whole uh, PlayStation uh, Sony's Play at Home the initiative Play at Home, yeah, goes into effect. So you're gonna have a bunch of indies for free starting pretty in the next couple of days here, and then uh, I think later you could already. Month, I, I believe you can are or it might have up until March. 31st you could have downloaded uh ratchet and clank i believe yeah that one was that was was like from way back too though uh yeah yeah it started it ended on the 31st i believe so this next wave drops pretty soon and then later on in the month uh horizon actually drops for free for a few days for a few weeks so there you go man free games all around dude i'm all for the free games because them uh raising that price point up really hurts yeah i i did not like that one bit so i'll 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 take i'll take all the games you throw at me go ahead like yeah playstation plus collection i didn't know that if you like added it to your library you just had it forever so i went nuts like everything's on there now like yeah that's that's the cool thing about uh as long as you're a ps plus member um, I think that's the cool thing about it, like being able to just if you want a game and you're not going to play it right then, you can just add it to your library. Mm-hmm. And then after once you do want to go back and play it or like if you're like me, I have a bunch of games in my library. And then once I'm done with the games that I'm or if I'm bored, I'll just go down my library. It's like, oh, OK, well, what, what haven't I played yet? You know, mm-hmm. and it's just they're just sitting there for free. So it's pretty cool. So we're definitely winning from this uh, this war they're having here. <laughs> yes. I want to call it a war, more of like a competition, marketing competition. Exactly. Well, it's a competition for for, for sales uh, for our money, basically. You know, for what I mean? sales, yeah. sales and attention, which is the name of the game. So, mm-hmm. whatever. If it means more free games for me, I'll take them same all righty and moving on to nintendo march 31st happened eric so you know what that was that was the day of mario's public execution as the internet lovingly dubbed it it was when uh the 3d collection and mario 35 were uh unceremoniously ripped off of the eShop, no longer to be sold digitally for the foreseeable future and there will be no longer restocking uh, 3D All-Stars physically. So whatever's out on the shelves is out on the shelves. But, you know, everyone was memeing that day about how Mario's dying and Nintendo's killing Mario and how could they do this. And uh, CNN actually took it seriously and published this whole article. Like, Nintendo's, Nintendo fans think that Nintendo's killing Mario? And it's just like... <laughs> Uh, uh cnn you do not know how to meme cnn man fucking boomer station mm-hmm. but yeah i mean this sucks i mean i think i mean i think we've discussed it before but i think the strategy or the thought process is they need to get rid of this stuff because they have the zelda anniversary this year and they want to push that and like drive focus like focus sales on that entirely you know what i mean to make them both as yeah. successful as possible but that I would mean, make sense at the same time kind of like sucks. yeah like why do you need to pull like people are gonna we're gonna keep buying that game perpetually if it was just sitting there you know what i mean new switch owners buy mario kart new switch owners would buy that eventually too you know what i mean yeah so yeah it sucks that they're doing know. that. Yeah, maybe I it'll think. come back eventually, or maybe they'll come back individually. See, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But you know, I okay. You know what though? Like, I understand like Super Mario Brothers thirty five because that like just 
that game in like general was really more of like a celebration for, for Mario, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so I understand that kind of game like being like a limited time only, but why did they have to do 3D All-Stars? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The thing and uh, I'll counter your point about Mario 35 with it's one of the few things like uh, extra free games like that where one of the very few things that you get as a benefit from subscribing to the online service. That's you know? true. No, so, yeah, that's true. So they're just removing value and functionality from that. So like, fuck that too, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, yeah, you're right, it, yeah. I, I think it's a bad move. I think it sucks. No, definitely. I agree with you. But the, only, the point I was trying to make is it's like I would I would understand why they would do something like that for yeah. a, a game literally called Super Mario Brothers 35. Yeah. You know? I get you. But oh well, it is what it is. Mario's dead. <laughs> moving, yeah, Mario's dead. Rip Mario. Uh, moving on from that though, Halo Infinite delayed to 2022. <laughs> oh, Kotaku. I actually, you know, it's funny. I actually got got by this too. I know you sent me the whole tweet and you're like, oh no, you're like already like, how bad is it development? You're freaking out already. And I was yeah. Just... So yeah, that was a, funny. a fake Twitter account with the Halo Infinite logo and you know, like the whole handle written out, but they had that white seven, like weird. It's like a, like a, it's not an emoji. It's like a text-based like you put it into HTML and it, and it creates a seven with like a, a like a black seven inside of a white circle. Yeah. So, so it kind of looks at, at like first glance like the verified symbol. You know what I mean? So uh, this tweet went out saying like w- with a picture like all dramatic like saying that Halo Infinite had been delayed. But it was a tough decision and it was signed by, mind you, the freaking like had a studio that that left forever ago so that should have been a dead giveaway too but you know i didn't pay attention to that either i just got swept (laughs) up in the madness but i'm also not a major quote-unquote respected publication like kotaku you know what i mean like yeah we're just dudes here we're just dudes we're not writing articles about it kotaku (laughs) Mm -hmm. so kotaku ran a whole article about it without realizing that it was a fake account like me and they had to if you look at the link i sent you they updated it to halo infinite delay to 2022 updated we got got hey everyone they got got hey everyone i am a dumbass halo infinite has not to kotaku's knowledge been canceled or delayed canceled the guy even the guy messed up again he just put canceled we fell for a fake tweet from an, in hindsight, obviously fake account on the EVA April Fools. Yes, I realize how this looks. I regret the error. Kotaku regrets the error. Halo Infinite is planned for release in the back half of 2021. So they made this man post like a public shameful apology. Rightfully so. But the thing is like, this is supposed to be like a credible publication, and the thing is, pe- Kotaku themselves and other w- other websites like them, but Kotaku in particular have come for like uh, people like us, like YouTubers and podcasters, for being quote unquote fake news, and we just like to run with rumors, and it's not a reliable source of information, and we, you can't be listening to YouTubers well, and podcasters well, well. because they're not reliable. They just go off whatever they read on the internet. So well, 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 Kotaku. How's that how, humble? How's that humble pie taste, bitches? How the turntables? How the turntables? <laughs> well, yeah, fuck Kotaku, I guess they're dumb. <laughs> uh, moving on from that, um, from the the positive Sony news earlier, we had some good news, and now we got some bad news. You ready for the bad news? Yeah, let's talk about the bad news. So last week we talked about that rumor that um, they were going to be shutting down the PlayStation 3, PSP, and PS Vita stores. Mm-hmm. wasn't confirmed, but it was pretty 
it was spreading like wildfire and a lot of like reliable sources were corroborating it. So it was looking very likely that is now official. So they are indeed closing the PS3, PSP and PS Vita stores. And they didn't tell anyone. And they didn't tell anyone, <laughs> including developers. So there are a bunch of like Vita developers who had literally just a couple months ago, as according to like this art, this art, uh, this article and other articles I've read, um, as recently as of a couple months ago, they were still selling and sending out dev kits for for the Vita. The companies dished out big money to get these dev kits. And we're never told that they were pulling the plug on these stores. So now they're halfway through development or almost done with development. A lot of them are scrambling to try and get these games out before they close the store down. But a lot of them just had to straight up cancel their game because they're not going to have a store to release it to by the time it's done. And they were given no indication, no heads up, no nothing. Yeah, that sucks. So PlayStation's pulling some sketchy shit as of late, man. And, and, and it's a wonder that, like, it's, I mean, it's no wonder that um, they're not getting a lot of, like, the cool indie support, like, everywhere else is. Like, Hades is nowhere to be found on PlayStation. A bunch of other cool indies aren't on there because this is how they treat people like that. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't seem like it's a very good relationship. Like, how are you going to not tell developers that you're closing down the very storefront they plan to release these games on? Yeah, it's fucked up, dude. They definitely could have gotten about that a lot better <laughs> yeah a lot of like, people are, i feel um, like i feel like they could have not not just for um not just for people that are still like using like the vita stores and um and what else is closing ps3 as well vita ps3 and ps2 and ps2, and PS2. Mm-hmm. So uh, I anyway, I think the PS2 is a typo because I don't think the PS2 had an online store. Uh, I don't think they did either, actually. Yeah, so I anyways, think that's a typo because <clears throat> it is the PSP one as well. Yeah. So, anyways, um, it just I feel like they could have given everyone more of a heads up, at least a year, you know. Yeah, definitely. Like this is just too sudden. Didn't um. Uh, how much time do you remember? How much time Nintendo gave for the for the Wii Store? For the Wii U one or for the Wii Store in general? The, the the Wii Store, the old Wii Store. No, honestly, I don't remember how much notice they had, but people weren't actively developing for that. Is the thing you know what I mean? Like yeah, they, exactly. That's see, true. Like, yeah. The thing is, like for the PS3 and the PSP, yeah, I, those I understand. Those you know, those were like mid two thousand systems that are like going on 20 years old and like fine but the vita even though like they chose to not support it for very long it's still only like less than 10 years old i think like it's way too yeah, early for don't, that for, for that think... storefront to shut down like you know what i mean like that, that the, is the, true. Wii, the Wii shop closed decades after the 3d the ds shop closed decades after like 10 years like that's it's, it's 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 weird that they're closing that one too, especially like I said, if there's still people like actively developing for it, and you know that, like you know that you're selling these people the dev kits. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true, and uh, I, that, I don't. That's another thing too, though. Like maybe they just decided to call it quits on it because when's the last time you've seen someone play on a Vita? I mean that that's fair and like that's the that's the reason that they're citing is that like they're they're not seeing like the the traffic the activity on there to warrant them keeping those servers up and stuff like that which is fair but again I feel like if you can go and collect the check to to send out the tools to make games and you're still letting people develop games for these yeah systems, that's true yeah that at is that shady. point you don't you you can't you have you have no right to to close that store down if you're actively if you know that there are people actively working to release something on there yeah well and like i said just at least give them more yeah, time like, than they're giving them up, you know like, yeah hey we want to develop this game can we get a dev kit well uh, not really we're closing the store soon we're not really accepting any new submissions for that store as of next year or something you know anything like that but nothing that's true I guess uh, I wonder if developers will still be able to make physical copies. 
I don't know. Because I know Vitas have like a super small disc, don't they? Yeah, it's like a little chip card thing similar to Switch games, I think. But oh, Is that um, what it was? Like yeah, because a... cause they're still like uh, the games that are still releasing, like Limited Run is the one that puts those all out. Fucking Limited Run. That's a story for a whole nother game. <sighs> Where's my Samurai Jack? Anyways. Fucking VC streamed his PS4 copy that he actually remember received. remember remember that i said i mentioned i don't know man those look like ps4 copies only and sure enough all the ps4, PS4 copies, copies only have been going out but what about all the other platforms you reportedly were gonna make dicks fuck man i just dude i i was so stoked for that fucking game too like, i've honestly i was so stoked that now i'm just like I forgot about it. Yeah, I don't even fucking care about it anymore. Like, like I, have I just, Hunter now. I just want, I want the game or my money back. Yeah, I just want to stick it on my shelf and forget about it and never buy from that fucking company ever again. Yeah, same dude. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, but, I get it. I get it. Pandemic, yada yada. But come on, mm-mm, mm-mm. come on. I'm not having it anymore. Come on. Moving on from that, Outriders released today. There's a uh, no Metacritic score yet, uh, but. Looks like uh, the user score is sitting at a 7.4 for the Series X version. I checked a couple of the other versions as well, and they're not that high, like pushing 70 in the 60s. So definitely, yeah. I, think, I think that free Game Pass perk is uh, is buying into the the extra user score on the on the Series X version. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think so too because. Because... I talked I talked to a few people too that actually played the demo, like some of our homies. Mm-hmm. And everyone is saying the same thing. It's not the best. It's yeah. just meh. The thing is, I saw I, I saw a lot of people dunking on it and uh, trashing it like after the demo and 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 leading up to it. But then as soon as it when it was announced that it was gonna be free on Game Pass, I the tone on Twitter and on the internet surrounding that game shifted very heavily. And then all of a sudden everyone was all gung ho. And now I'm seeing a lot of positivity surrounding it. Well, that's because it's free. With yeah. Game Pass now. Like exactly. So I think you know the not having to take that $70 <laughs> blow to buy into it really, really, really ups the the enjoyment value, like, inherently, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing, too, because, like, I'm pretty sure that Game Pass pretty much saved this game from another from godfall. Irre- irrelevancy, yeah. From, like, another godfall situation, you know what I mean? Irrelevance. Because if people were buying Who? this... Exactly. If people were buying this game at like seventy dollars, sixty dollars with discounts or whatever the hell my like they got it at, like, and then they played it and it resembled something similar to the demo, then uh, people would be up in arms right now. This user score would be so high. <laughs> yeah, it would be review bomb city like always. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. See now I'm not this. This leads me to believe that. I don't, Game Pass, while it's good for games and for the customers and stuff, like, what can this, how can this really affect the way that we see games? You know what I mean? Like, is it gonna be, is it gonna become a thing where, like, oh, it's on Game Pass, so it might be okay? Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it really good? Cause it's on Game Pass, you know? I really hope that doesn't become like, cause that's what this is like seems to me you know what i mean because all yeah. i heard was negative things about the demo just like not even not even it wasn't even that bad it wasn't even like negative stuff it was just like it wasn't what i expected you know like just like mixed reviews that were just like meh okay it was fun but not really right yeah everyone so, like, says it everyone says it's it, it's it's all right it's all right we're yeah. just all right you know what i mean yeah exactly it's nothing like whoa nothing like that you want to sit there and play for hours kind of thing you know nobody that i've talked to or heard of like that played it is like super gung-ho about this game yeah so i'm on the same boat here yeah so i don't know man i don't know if this is going to be i really hope this isn't like create that tone you know what i mean yeah like i said i downloaded it i just 
time I've been able to pull myself off a monster hunter to actually uh get a good play play of it. Holy crap, dude. Like I'm running just part the kimono here for the for the listeners. I'm running my dual monitors because I got my monitor in for my PC. Mm-hmm. Just filling y'all in out there. And I'm, I've, I've been running it like dual monitor with my uh, laptop for the past couple of days since I got it. And like the color difference is insane. Like it looks so washed, like the, everything looks so washed out on my laptop. But I never, I never noticed that. Bro, that's how I felt when I went from my 1080p TV, not even that I was using for a monitor. The, when I went to this new monitor that I have now. It's like night and day. Like everything looks so much better. Yeah, everything looks beautiful over here, man. I'm digging it. Shout out Acer Nitro. Hey. But yeah, um, I think that does it for uh, the smaller topics for this week. Uh, so before we jump into those, uh, we did miss uh, a question last week. No new questions for this week, but we did skip one last week. Unfortunately, I just uh, slipped my mind. Mm-hmm. But uh, Night Juan, Night Dev, now on Discord. Hey, uh, the homie. Mm-hmm. In light of the rumors for a revised version of the Nintendo Switch growing stronger, what features would you like them to implement in the console in that new version? Mm, I'd like an option for higher resolutions, if possible. I uh, see. You no, know, see. You know what? I would have said the same thing. Ex- like uh, around a year ago but now i want them to pour if if they do have extra juice and extra power in there i want them to focus all of that solely on one thing and one thing alone and that is frame rate well yeah that's true well i think that would kind of come with the higher resolution no it's a, it's, no it's, you're it's right tra- you're right it's the trade-off yeah it's the trade-off yeah, yeah, you're right you're i right. wouldn't care if they if it stayed the same resolution like if it stayed 1080, uh, 720 uh, handheld, like I don't care for like if the if they don't do a 4K one or whatever, I'll sacrifice the 4K if they can do the 1080 at a stable 60 for most games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that would make sense. Well, maybe not even like full 4K. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe, what, maybe like 1440p or something, but yeah, at least like an option. Like I said, at that, that point, the difference between 1080 and 1440, like I said, instead of going for that extra bit of resolution, I'd rather them like really, really lock in that high frame rate, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's that's true. It's like it's what it's like. We've come to learn now that we that that shit matters a lot more than we used to once think you know i mean so that's true that's that's definitely the priority for me now at least in games yeah uh let's see what other feature would i like what other can you imagine if 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 monster hunter rise ran at 60 on there that'd be dope you know what you know what i think um needs an update for sure is the the dock yeah see you know what? I, I like this discussion we're having because usually when I see other podcasts or any other YouTubers or anything like that discuss what features they want in the Switch Pro, they say things that I don't I don't agree with. And I think it's just like, really? Like, that's your big gripe with it? And it's the, a big gripe that a lot, like, oh, I want themes and folders. And it's just like, I don't care about none of that. Fuck? Cares. When do you, when do you even about, use the folder for no? Like, they're like, oh, I want to organize my games. Like, put all my RPGs in an RPG folder. Like, like and they're like, oh, it's dumb that I have to go to all games and look for whatever game I'm looking for. Like, how? Nobody, no, none of the other consoles, unless you're on PC, does like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Do they don't? Like, like that's like because for a while, no. for a while, I didn't have anything, but. A, no a, ps a switch and everything like that or, like playstation you don't it's the same thing you don't you, there's a search function they could like go and search your your game mm-hmm. i i think i don't know if switch has that but i believe they might i don't think no, it does no okay yeah. well there's a search function in like playstation and xbox for sure like they could just start typing your game and your game will pop up but i don't think there's like folders that you can 
Okay. Yeah, but dude, I swear to you, like people like make videos and it's like it's been four years and Switch still doesn't have folders, and it's just like, oh no, you're like, what the fuck do you mean? No, like, I want more practical and, solutions. And themes you know, too, like, like themes, like like when you pre-order fucking Persona Five on place to, on PS4 and you get like a cool like background theme for your like. I honestly never put any of those on even when i did have them i think i think i got a bunch of destiny ones with destiny a long time ago and like i don't really fuck with shit like that like fucking... i mean that's cool i had i like use some themes I, you don't really need it now on the ps5 because every game has like their own background yeah but uh i remember uh on ps oh am i getting children yeah you're getting yelling babies but i think uh, it stopped uh, as soon I, as i, I tried uh, to right. pause god damn all right it. Uh, well, I guess we got a yelling baby in there. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You didn't really care about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did use like some of the themes that I got, but like only like the free themes that were there, you know? Like, and even then, I don't think a lot of people fucked with buying all those like crazy themes that PlayStation had, you know? So, know. anyways, aside from that, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like, all the, I feel like all those do is like slow down like your, your whole you. like, UI, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. so like. I don't see what the big so like if anything like I want them to focus on actual like how I'm gonna how it's gonna affect me playing the game not like organization exactly or exactly my so, like, I don't so, give a I could give a flying fuck about shit like that so going back to the topics of features that I think need to be worked on or revised definitely the dock mm -hmm. the dock needs some kind of change maybe some kind of padding between the screen and the dock. Like I know a lot felt or something. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people scratch their switches like that. Um, let's see. I uh, think that's where they like, could add like because it's that thing's hollow in it. They could add some sort of extra processing power to that, where that's how you could get 4K output or something. You know what I mean? That's if, what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. yeah, that's 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 what I would like to see. Like, if they did that, that would be dope. But uh, aside from that, I think my only other complaint with it is like fix the damn controller drift, bro. Like update these Joy Cons, do whatever it is. I would want like not only just that, but like maybe like fix the form factor a bit because you do get like hella like it, yeah claw dude, hand I playing like on Joy. -Con. Like I, I I think I've showed it off before, but like if I don't have this fucking grip on my Switch, the fucking satisfy grips on yeah like, this, all of my switches. This guy right like, here. This guy, I, like I am absolutely, there's no way I can play handheld because, like, yeah, this guy right here. This, yeah. this, this when you gave me this, it changed changed my handheld like life, dude. I told you, you have dude, no that idea. Thing is fucking amazing, yeah. Um, it's like you're actually holding a controller. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. If if they could make it make like give it like some kind of handle or like shape or. I don't know. Make make it a little bit more ergonomic, you know. Yeah, exactly. They don't that... even have they don't even have to make it like change the shape if they just like I don't know made them bulkier or something, you know. Where something you can, like, like you can I actually don't know. grip them somehow. You know what I mean? I don't know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah, so... they need to work on that controller. But yeah, for sure. I think. Yeah, I think if anything, I I just want them to focus more on like I said, making games play better. Yeah. yeah, that would that would be that would be great. Make things feel a little less clunky on there because some games do chunk up pretty heavily, you know. Yeah. Well, I will. You know what though? Going from, I I will say this. Going from other from like on PC and play PS Five. I didn't feel the I didn't feel the change in Monster Hunter. To like it didn't feel it doesn't feel as clunky as other other Switch games. Oh, dude, yeah. Well, well, that's gonna be our next topic. You know what? Let's just roll right into that because, yeah, that one in particular, like I said, like even though it is thirty frames, it would be great if it was sixty. Like, fucking Capcom pulled some wizard. There's dream. some voodoo magic going on there, bro. Cause... Like this game should has no right looking or playing the way it does on this machine, dude. Like. Even in handheld mode, like giant, like f like yesterday we had three people with two pets each, and we had at times two to three monsters having a turf war at the same time, and 
the frame rate's just like cool. Yeah, not just that, but like not dropping, no did... nothing. The character models of on some of those monsters look like they were dropped straight out of a PS4. Like the fur textures are like great. Like this game looks amazing on the Switch. Yeah, dude, I agree. And it's it really dude, I was last night, uh my brother and I were playing with you on Wi-Fi. And we we I was on Wi-Fi too. We all did I I didn't have any problems or anything. Yeah, the network connection was like, like I we didn't even have to think about it ever. There was no loading, there was no buffering, there was yeah, no lag, was fine. there was no no was nothing fine. at all. And like this game has like completely taken over my my life. Like even before, like we had been talking about it on the show. Like I had been trying to like bang my head against this demo, and from what I from what I heard, like from the homie Zeno Heart, like those are just cranked up in difficulty just to give you a taste of things and stuff like that so i can understand why i was having a tough time with it but with this one like after like actually like taking the time to go through the tutorials and like learning what and where you have to do with things and like how the menus work and everything like that like i've had a blast learning and then it all happened when i fucking found the switch axe like i had been trying <laughs> a bunch of like i tried the twin blades wasn't digging it I tried the the long sword. It felt like a regular like action RPG. Wasn't digging that too much either. Um, I don't know. I think I tried one more thing, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, the hammer. The hammer. I played with the hammer for a while. Hmm. Too slow for my liking. Ah, uh, okay. Then I tried the motherfucking switch axe the and swag axe. Apparently, the swag axe. I had no idea <laughs> what it called that. I found out yesterday. Well, I'm we rocking... call, well, my my brother and friends called yeah. that. I, I, I'm fucking running the swag axe. I'm running the switch axe, and I'm having a fucking blast, dude. Like the like the more the, like the better ones you craft and everything like that. The sicker combos you can pull off and everything like that. Like this game is is crazy, dude. Like it starts off like so simple, and like the more you go into it and the more you progress and the more time you put into it like you like second nature start picking up these little maneuvers and then all of a sudden you're like flying around and like dropping on these monsters from like every angle with that little wire bug and like you like you start recognizing oh it's about to dip so you're already on your dog and chasing it before it has a chance to dip and like just like you you start to understand the language of the game you know what i mean and like well yeah as with any game right yeah so it's it's just it's it's been a blast learning it and now like that's all i want to do man like i like in between like matt like when you've pulled me off for destiny we've just played like a bunch of crucible and stuff like that like literally like in between matches while we're matchmaking i'll like get a few hits in on a monster and like you'll be yeah like, it was actually, starting. Oh, okay it's actually pretty funny this we'd just be playing or loading into diablo or destiny and then uh, we, we would just hear yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> this is rad <laughs> this is my my hunter going fucking hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah man uh you got it a couple you got a uh, pretty late like almost a week after everyone else so you've only played it for Yo, a bit but how are you liking game, it so far well i'm loving it dude so far but um well first of all it took me forever to get this game because it was sold out everywhere it was sold out everywhere in orange county bro i could yeah, not i could not get it uh so scheduled for a pickup sold over four million copies in the first three days it was sold out at best buy it was sold out at the game stops nearby it was just sold out and i couldn't find it and so i had to i, I ordered it from gamestop and they actually shipped it from texas from their headquarters damn yeah so it was uh it's it took a little while to get it but i got it and yeah dude I, i've been having a lot of fun with it 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 feels it feels and plays very similar to monster hunter world so i wasn't like thrown into thrown in as deep as you were yeah 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 it's because i i've played monster hunter world so it it's similar right yeah this one like built upon like because world uh apparently added a lot of like uh quality of life upgrades and like accessibility like it made it 
not as fucking like daunting as as all the other monster hunters were before that right i mean it's still pretty menu heavy and pretty fucking complex but there's um, actually a lot going on in the world yeah yeah yeah. but but even that is like way simplified to what what to like what the older games were you know what i mean yeah so a lot of people got in with that one and uh from what i hear from everyone in the community that actually has played both and everything it's kind of like uh they built upon that a bit so it's a combination of like the old stuff so there is still a lot of menu and still a lot of heavy crazy stuff going on in there but it also does have like the added quality of life and mobility type of things that world added and everything like that yeah this one takes it a step further by adding the pets well, we always had the palico, the 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 cats, right? The yeah, palicos. we had the cats. We didn't have the. I think in Monster Hunter World, you didn't have the thing you could ride the doggo. Yeah, so now it's called the Palamute, Palamut. It's uh, the doggos that you can ride, and they fight alongside you. You can ride on their back, and eventually you start like incorporating them super heavily into your fighting style. Like, like for example, like you can basically do everything that you need to do. Like that you like try and like find a safe a safe spot too like if you need to sharpen your weapon if you need to drink a potion if you need to eat a ration you can do that while riding on its back without ever missing a, a step and like without dropping speed basically you know what i mean so you can like ride it around and easily avoid any monster's attacks no matter how crazy because you're riding your dog but you're also sharpening your weapon doing what you got to do so like I have it to like when I I open you know when you click down and you open the the radio menu or like the big menu with like yeah you know, like the directional one, I have it to just click down and, and drag down and it'll immediately whistle for my dog. He'll come running from wherever he's at, so he's close enough for me to mount him, and I'll hop on, just run away and do what I gotta do, sharpen, then immediately run back, hop off of him into a jumping attack and like right back into it. like it's all very fluid, very snappy. The wire bug allows for all that because you can get like all the way across an area with just a quick little swing you know what i mean it's yeah it's fun it's definitely it's definitely a good like having the doggo is definitely a good upgrade for sure but the thing is too like i feel like in monster hunter world although the game feels like like it might it feels like it might take a little while to get to places but i feel like while everything looks bigger, it's kind of like a little smaller. Yeah, and I don't know if World was also like similar to Rise, but I know a lot of people are saying that um, before, you know how all the areas are numbered? Yeah. On the map, before, ev- between every numbered area, there was a loading screen in previous games. No, it's not like that. It's not like that in world. Yeah, so those two basically really changed the game because apparently like every time a monster runs away and books it, uh, in the older games, you would have to actually tag them with a paintball to, to be able to track their location. And every time you would be following them, you'd have to wait for a giant load screen. And, like, it, it just really, like, brought the game to a grinding halt at times. And no, these are I, just, I, I, yeah, all rendered at once. No, like, no transitions between the areas. You can just go and never stop hunting, you know what I mean? And yeah. so definitely seems like the more you know the they're they're improving with with every release you know what i mean they're making them better with every release and rightfully so man like they're it's it's now the highest selling capcom franchise of all time world is the best selling one of all time and uh, this one fell about a million short of world's opening weekend but keep in mind it's only on one platform when world dropped on two with a much bigger install base at the time it was like it came out pretty late in the ps4 xbox one era right it is kind of like in the middle i think 2016 2017 ish yeah yeah i think yeah. so yeah and then they had iceborne iceborne kind of revitalized the two mm-hmm. the dlc but yeah we're gonna be jumping into that pretty soon too uh that's one of the games that i got for free in that in that playstation plus collection so i just have to buy the expansion but yeah man this game finally sold me on monster hunter and now i'm Bro, gonna I'd... dive into world i'm gonna i'm gonna get into it because like fuck, you're gonna man. you're you're gonna like world it's it it, it plays very similar yeah, so the only, the if you like that's gonna like really kill me is not having the doggo yeah that's the only thing that's a little the little sucky they need, but, to, uh, they need to do a, a another expansion for world and add palamuts that would be dope 
but I don't think you need them because I think in world there's a lot of like uh, ways to get around in the environment, mm, a lot okay. of climbing. And then once you, uh, I think in Iceborne they introduced the like the little grappling hook. So in oh, Iceborne, yeah, yeah. it's like you, it's like the, the it's kind of like pre, the wire bug, the precursor to the wire bug. I think yeah. it's called like the claw hook or something like that. Claw yeah, 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 exactly. So it's pretty much what the wire bug is now. Yeah. But yeah, Monster Hunter Rise definitely my game of the my front runner for game of the year so far, man. Um, I've only played multiplayer once, and that was last night with you and Elliot, and that shit's fucking fun, bro. Just running around with your bros hunting shit. Yeah, that was cool. But yeah, we definitely gotta hop back into some more of that, man. But yeah, Monster Hunter Rise, I'm loving that shit, man. Yeah, dude, so am I. So, moving on from that, our last topic here is a bit of a short topic. Don't got much to say on it because it, it had a pretty quick turnaround. But um, uh, Nibelian on Twitter, Nibble, he's he's uh, <laughs> he, he's usually pretty spot on about things that he posts. He's like, like a Twitter leaker, Twitter insider type of thing. He posted uh, via VGC, it was Video Games Chronicle, the article, uh, E3 2021 will be a digital event and it could be behind a paywall. So apparently there was rumors circulating behind the scenes that um, uh, basically not that the whole event was going to be behind a paywall. Like um, like in general, to like you, you weren't going to have to, like the public was always going to be able to watch it for free, but apparently they were, gonna, they were looking into the possibility of selling like a premium pass type of thing where like Maybe you got some demos that other people didn't get or something like that. Or mm, yeah. you got to see certain conferences that others didn't. So, like, basically hold certain stuff behind a paywall. But um, E3 and the ESA uh, fired back pretty quickly a couple hours later. Uh, E3's 2021 digital show is a free event for all attendees. We're excited to fill you in on all the real news for the event very soon. All the real news for the event very soon. So they're taking, taking their shots there. A little bit. Yeah, well, so I mean, they, they just got to clear it up, I guess. Yeah, they got to be real about it, right? But what do you think, man? Do you think, uh, how do you think it would have it would have gone over for them if if, if they would have gone forward with some sort of paid model? Mm, I think that would have been not, that, not, that would not have been good for them, first of all. But what I do think... They're already been, on the cusp of dying, you know? Yeah, what I do think would have been cool is... If they would have said like, "Hey, okay, every, like you can watch the event for free, right?" Mm -hmm. But maybe if they did some kind of thing like, "Oh, like E three, like you said, like an E three demo package or something," mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, like, because that was that is the whole thing about E three, right? Like going there, going to the convention and and getting to try, shit getting to try out. exactly, yeah, and and you do have to pay to go to E three, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm thinking, like. If it would have been something like that, if they do put something out like that, like, oh, hey, pay a certain amount of money and you guys, uh, you can get all the demos that, like, that you can install on your computer or whatever for, yeah. for this amount of money. And I, you know, I don't know, like, whatever the price of a ticket was, right? Mm -hmm. That, if, if they have the option to do that, that would be cool. But having, like, a digital show, like, be behind a paywall, that's kind of fucked. Yeah, especially especially when, for the and majority, all, all that all that stuff. Even when they did have the convention, all that stuff came out like almost like, all they had like live events on TV and stuff. That would yeah, run it. like G four and shit back in the day used to cover it. But um, uh, especially with like what happened last year when the whole pandemic hit and it was canceled for the first time and there was no E three or anything like. If you remember, they did try and have some sort of digital presence, and most of the companies just went off and did their own shit. Because why are they gonna pay E3 to do anything when they can just go live stream on their own YouTube channel and pull in the same, if not more, viewers without paying any sort of million dollar licensing fee to pull up with a booth and all that type of shit you know what i mean yeah that's true yeah yeah so they were times already, are changing man yeah times are time, changing, times are changing company and the big companies are starting to realize that they don't need them so 
I feel like if they were even to like breathe a word of an attempt to try and put this behind a paywall, that would literally be the final nail in their fucking coffin. Like they would lose any and all support of viewership and everything like that. And they would shrink down into irrelevance completely. You know what I mean? Until like if and when they could probably do some sort of physical thing again, I don't think anyone would care to show up and pay money to watch a live stream. You know what I mean? So that's true. The only thing, like especially I said, if that, all the big companies aren't there, right? The only thing, like I said, the only cool thing about E3 is that they did have like the hands-on stuff. You know, that was always the thing. It's like you go to E3 and you get to play these games and try them out before anyone else. Yeah, and then there was like the extra secret behind closed door stuff where like people didn't even see it, but you got to play like super secret stuff like that's the whole appeal is like that's how people marketed that's how like small a lot of like smaller indie games and shit like that gets funded because people are out there in person and they get to rub elbows you know what i mean with the big wigs and everything like that exactly that's the value there is like the in-person interaction and right but if they don't have that if they don't have that kind of thing then they ain't got nothing what you know what i mean their whole their whole thing is just like the actual convention the way i see it so yeah having you're right like having a digital conference that was paid for would have been so bad so yeah but luckily it doesn't seem to be the case so i guess whatever it ends up being whoever ends i mean up they, they gotta up, they gotta know that right they they, they have to know that the thing is, dude, like, we've, I mean, I've worked for plenty of corporations, and I think we've touched on this before, like, corporate people are so fucking disconnected from reality, bro, that's that, like, true, that's true. it's possible that they don't see any of this shit, you know what I mean? That's true. So. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what the real news is behind yeah. E3. Yeah, like I said, we'll see who even ends up actually showing up to their event instead of just doing their own thing again, you know what I mean? So. But it's coming up a couple months away. We'll see what usually up, happens dude. in June. So we'll see what ends up happening over the next couple of weeks. See if they announce announce some sort of lineup or anything like that. But uh, that's pretty much going to do it for us here on the podcast this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you made it this far, you are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? Anyway, thank you so much. If you want to find me on the internet and tell me how horrible I am at singing that song to you, you can find me at Knife Life Osc, Knife Life OSC, pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, you can find Eric at... You can find me as Erky Plays everywhere on the internet. Beautiful. You can find the audio version of this podcast on Spotify anchor puts us uh pretty much everywhere else that you could possibly want to enjoy podcasts so just give us a search as pod boys advance if you want to find my other podcast where i rant about a bunch of random stuff uh it's called eight hour chat you can find it on all the same channels that you can find this one and um other than that my pc is now in production Yay! Should be getting it pretty soon. Once that happens, we are looking to go back full force to content creation on the channel. So be on the lookout for that over the next couple weeks. Uh, but other than that, join the Discord. Send us some questions. You know how it goes. Hit us up on Twitter. You can send yeah. the questions there too. We'll answer them. Like Night Dev's question. But yeah, until next time, my name is Oscar. I'm Eric. And this has been the Pod Boys Advance. We will see you guys next time. Later. Later. Don't do it. You know what I'm going to say. Just don't do it. Don't eat the apple pie. <laughs>